guys, Dahlia here, welcome to my channel. So this video is pretty damn exciting. As part of Jenna Marissa's street team, I decided to make a book tag for The Saviour's Champion. I've been able to participate in so many different marketing opportunities for TSC that I just wanted to kind of contribute more, like if I could, in any way possible. And so of course I created a book tag because book tags are fun and everyone can do them. Jenna Marisi published her debut novel Eve in 2015 and since then has marketed herself like crazy. Okay, before then she also marketed herself like crazy because she had fantastic advice. But from all this she became a full-time writer. This means she gets to sit down and write and get paid for it. But of course it's not as easy as it sounds. There are a lot of stresses that come with this, but it just means that she can do what she loves as a job. And honestly, she's worked so hard that she deserves this. To become a full-time writer off of your first book is really difficult. I mean, even traditionally published authors know that it's really hard. If the publisher does not see you as worthy, they're not gonna market you as well as, you know, another person's book. If JK Rowling brings out a book, well, they're gonna market her like crazy because they know she's gonna bring in the funds. But as a self-published author, you have to do everything yourself. But her work didn't end there. She then began on the journey to TSC. And finally, after three long years, Jenna is releasing her second book. And it's the first book in the Saviors series. Yes, you heard that right, series. This beautiful little book baby is going to be released on the 24th of this month, guys. This month. Now you've heard me talk about this book a million times, so let's just get into the tag. Question 1. SP Love. Show some love for a self-published author. If you haven't been following Jenna Marcy from the start, you may not actually know just how hard she's worked. During the writing and the releasing of Eve, Jenna suffered some pretty crippling depression and anxiety. But through her forward attitude and her really fantastic writing advice and her honesty about her position and her condition, she has been able to inspire so many writers, myself included. You also might not know this, but Cliff, her amazingly endearing partner, suffered from spinal cord damage. So Jenna became his carer and honestly, I think that she would do it genuinely until the day that she died and not complain about it once. She's such an honestly beautiful person that she cares, She just cares so much for other people and seeing them do well and helping and it just shows just how much she's doing for Cliff. But despite everything in her life that wanted to cut her down, she didn't give up. And she will continue to be an inspiration to writers for a very long time. Question 2. Fantasy love. Show some love for a fantasy novel series that influenced impacted you. The first fantasy series that I read was A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. But these books actually had a huge impact in my life. I believe that if I had never started reading them, I probably wouldn't have gotten into fantasy. I needed something light rather than something heavy. I, uh, when I was a kid, I read the Shannara Chronicles and loved them when I was a kid, of course. But then as I got older, I kind of grew out of that and more into true crime or crime in general. And so getting back into fantasy has been a really fun ride for me. Sarah J Maas writes well-rounded characters and really strong plots and I love the way that she mixes in fairy tales because it's kind of like a little playful thing and I love fairy tales. Question 3. True Love, a book with healthy relationships. A book other than The Saviour's Champion that has healthy relationships, in my opinion, is Cross Stitch or Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Claire and Jamie are meant to be together and there are a few other side relationships that are really beautiful and endearing. The way that Jamie's sister and her husband care for each other is quite beautiful and I just I love everything about Claire and Jamie. And even though they're from different time periods, and yes, they do have to sort a lot of stuff out because they're, well, they're two completely different people from two completely different time periods. So what one believes is right for one thing, the other one does not. So when they actually work through all these little things and see they actually work through the things in their relationship, they don't just go their separate ways like every single young adult book that I've ever read ever. But they grow to respect and adore one another and it's very, very sweet. Question four, representation, a book with all the diversity. Honestly, this question was really hard for me and I created it, but 
The Saviors Champion had an amazing array of diversity that I or representation that I really didn't think that I could find another book that measured up, but obviously I didn't want to use the Saviors Champion for every single question, even though I could have. So I'm going to have to go with The Rainbow Boys by Alex Sanchez. Now I read this trilogy in high school and it's about these um, three young gay men who are at different stages of coming out. One is totally out and he's totally accepted it and he's flamboyant as hell and amazingly adorable. Then there's another one who's his friend who's quiet and nobody knows that he's gay but I mean he is and he's very sweet and quiet. And then there is the jock who has not accepted it, is curious about it, and doesn't want to admit it, but he wants to seek help for it because he's scared of what's going to happen. So this book just gives a great insight into three different characters who are dealing with the same issue or the same problem or the same difference. And it's fascinating to see how each of them responds to said problem. And this trilogy will forever be one of my favorites. Question 5. Tobias, a book with a gentle warrior. V.E. Schwab's A Darker Shade of Magic. Cal's character is so freaking beautiful. I adore Cal. He's so considerate, he's so gentle, but also he's so protective and he will take on the issues of the world just so the world doesn't have to deal with them. He's ready to risk it all just to save the world that he loves. He's just, he's an amazing character. I adore him. Question six, Deadly Beast, a monster of a character. When people talk about flowers in the attic, they never really mention the mother. They mention the grandmother because she is quite obviously evil. But Corinne was the real monster. She allowed her mother to do all these nasty things and never said anything. And then whew, when the time comes when she has to subdue that problem, the problems, she is totally okay with doing it. And if you have read this series, you know which point that I'm talking about and you probably feel just as disgusted as I do. Question seven, Peaches, a book with hella symbology. Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And of course, Through the Looking Glass. Like, I mean, they kind of get lumped together, but yes, both of them. There is so much symbology. It is insane, everything that keeps popping up in the books. When I was reading them, I was actually listening to the audiobook, but everything that was popping up, I was like, ah, ha, ha, oh my gosh, another symbology, another symbology. So if you haven't read it, I highly recommend the read. They are so much fun and they're only short books, so just go for it. You can read them in four hours. Question eight, Brutal Battles, a book with the best fight scenes. I'm going to have to go with The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins here. I don't really read a lot of books with fight scenes in it that I can that really stick out in my memory. But there's a particular fight scene in The Hunger Games that's done really well and it's the one right at the end before it's just the two participants left. So you probably know which one I'm talking about, but I love the way that that's done. And also the entirety of Mockingjay. I adore that book. That is so 1984 that I loved it from the moment that I started reading it. Question nine, not what it seems, crazy plot twist. The plot twists in TSC are amazing. But other than that, I'm currently reading Fen by Daisy Johnson, which is a collection of her short stories, all to do with like these, this mythology surrounding a Fen in England. I have to review it for my course, so it's been super fun, but she has added in these little plot twists that just there's a building up to it and you know that something's coming but it, every single time I couldn't guess what was coming and these are short stories with little plot twists in them they were done really fantastically and finally question number 10 self-love talk about your book work in progress so the Acro Contessa is a science fiction fantasy novel about a girl who has to overthrow her mother and become the Contessa of her state, which is Orville. She must do this in order to save the species that she now belongs to. But along the way, she has to deal with her paralysis, she is a paraplegic, and also deal with her uncontrollable telekinesis. It is really weak at the start, so she has to build it up in order to actually overthrow her mother. 
This novel is set in a world of lies and manipulation and the growing need for change. Currently I'm in the revising stage of this novel and I'm actually getting back into writing the first couple of chapters because me and the brilliant Emily Bourne, I will tag her, uh, I will link her channel below, um, we're doing a swapsies because she writes contemporary and I write science fiction fantasy so we're going to do swapsies and read each other's work. It's going to be so much fun, I'm so excited. But yeah, so that concludes this tag. I would love to tag the beautiful Emily Bourne. I'd also love to tag the entirety of the street team. I mean, you guys will already know because I will post this in the Facebook group. So I tag all you guys as well. If you have any questions or want me to cover a specific topic, please drop a comment below. If you want to follow my journey on other platforms, see the links in the description bar. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and more. I post videos every Thursdays and tags every other Wednesday. So subscribe and hit that little bell if you want to be notified. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.